Hello everyone, what's going on? I'm Gaff, the Master 974, back again today, and welcome to probably the third or fourth version of this episode zero Valve Source Code tutorial that I'm going to be doing regarding the new Team Fortress 2 forward slash Source 2013 multiplayer code that Valve recently updated and provided to us. So I do need to say from the get go that this is only going to be applicable to this new multiplayer code. If you're going to want to do anything with the single player code then I have to refer you to old guides that I've done for example the 2023 version of episode 0 for Windows and also a specific video about getting the code compiled on Linux because the single player code hasn't been updated in the same way that the multiplayer code has been. But I'll go over all of the necessary steps that you need to follow in order to hopefully get the code compiled on your system. So one of the first things you need to do, and it is pretty simple, you need to go and download Steam and update it, log into your account, and then go to your library. And then you want to go to the tools section. Now this might be disabled and you might not be able to see it. So you might need to go to some sort of checklist drop down menu and enable the tools section. And my Steam interface might look different to yours. But um, yeah, once you enable the tools, you want to scroll down through the tools and find Source STK Base 2013 Multiplayer and then install that onto your system. And what I'm going to be doing for this video is intertwining the Windows and Linux guides because it's fairly straightforward. So if you're on Windows, you want to go to Valve's GitHub page, which I'll leave in the description. And you want to download a zip of the code, which you can do by clicking on the green code button and then selecting the download zip option. This will download a .zip file onto your system and then you can extract the contents and place the contents wherever you want to on your system. Another thing you might want to get is Python. So you can go to Python's website and install that onto your system. And one thing that is important to do is select the option add python.exe to path. Now, this isn't strictly needed and I'll get to it later. But um, if you're doing this on a clean install like I am, then this is something that you want to do. Now, this might not end up working for you if you already have something like Anaconda installed on your system, like what I have. But uh, as I said, I'll get to it later. You don't need to worry about this too much. It is a situation, a problem that you can be resolved later. And if you're on Linux, then on Debian based operating systems like Ubuntu, then you want to open up a terminal, which is basically a command prompt command line interface. And you want to type in sudo apt-get install git podman. So git is just going to make getting the source code really easy and podman is what's going to be used to actually compile the code. And if you want Arch based Linux like the Steam Deck or Manjaro, then you want to do sudo pacman dash capital S git podman. Then once those projects have been compiled and installed or whatever onto your system, you want to go to somewhere like your home directory and type in git clone https colon forward slash forward slash github.com forward slash valve software forward slash source dash sdk dash 2013 and you can specify a folder name after this for example new mp code and what this line will do is download and extract the code into the folder called new mp code if you actually specify it but if you don't specify a folder name then it will just go into a folder called source sdk 2013 now going back to Windows, this is the part where you want to download and install Visual Studio 2022. Now at some point during the installation process, you'll be asked about what workloads you want to install. So what I would advise you to do is select the option Desktop Development with C++. And if you look to the right hand side, it should provide some installation details, such as the components that are going to be installed, such as the C++ ATL for latest V143 build tools for both x86 and x64 and the Windows 11 SDK version 10.0.22621.0 and some more options. Now what I would advise you to do is also select the C++ 
MFC for latest V143 build tools for both x86 and x64. It's a bit of a mouthful, but these components that I've talked about are going to be necessary for the launcher project inside of the everything solution that we'll get to in a little bit to compile properly. So that's C++ ATL forward slash MFC for latest V143 build tools and the Windows 11 SDK version 10.0.22621.0. Then once Visual Studio 2022 has fully installed, you can go to your source code's SRC folder and simply run the create all projects.bat file and it will create an everything.sln file, the everything solution, and you can open it up and simply change the build type from debug to release and then go to the build tab, click on rebuild solution and it will begin to compile the code. And going back to Linux, at this point, you want to go to your source code directory's SRC folder and you want to open up a terminal here and you want to type in dot forward slash build or project. Now this will download some blobs and one of them is about 1.4 gigabytes in size. And if you have bad internet like I do, then it might take a while for this to download. Now you might get an error once that's finished downloading, which says something to the effect of stat fs home user dot c cache no such file or directory now to resolve this issue you just need to go to your home directory and create a folder called dot c cache and then run that build or project file again and then the code should begin to compile now one thing to note it didn't start immediately for me it actually took somewhere in the ballpark of four minutes just for the compilation process to begin so just be patient with it. But at this point, the code should compile without any issues. Now you might see some minor errors on Windows and Linux, for example, loss of data because of data type conversions or vector, vector components being uninitialized on Linux. But there shouldn't be any errors, any major problems that stops the code from being compiled. Now, when I did my initial testing on Windows, the launcher projects didn't compile properly because that's where you need the C++ ATL MFC components, as I talked about earlier. And if you already have Visual Studio 2022 installed, but you are experiencing these issues, then you can download the necessary components by going to the tools tab and then select get tools and features. And then inside of the installer, you just need to go to the individual components section and find the components that you need to install that I talked about earlier. Then if you have any compilation errors with the server projects, then this is actually because there's two .h files called spawn helper nut and vscript helper nut that don't actually get populated with any data, that data being seemingly random hexadecimal values. So this is the step where Python is actually needed to ensure that those files get created properly but if you're like me you could pretty much just copy and paste the files that somebody else provides supposing that somebody else actually provides them so on that front what i'm going to be doing to prepare for this video is actually create a fork of this new multiplayer code and i'll include these spawn helper nut and vscript helper nut.h files in case anyone has any issues with the server compilation but it also be an opportunity for me to add any multiplayer code from any of the Valve source code tutorial and source shorts videos that I've done on the channel. But anyway, at this point, you should be able to go into something like debugging in Visual Studio. And if you're using the release build, then the debugging options should already be pre-filled for you. So you don't need to worry about anything. Just click on the debugging button and it should go into the Team Fortress 2 or Source 2013 multiplayer mod. Or you can actually go to your mod's game folder and click on the applications that are there. So for example, the mod TF or mod HL2MP, whatever they're called, and that would load into the respective mods. Or you can simply copy the mod folder into your Steam, Steam apps, Source mods folder. And after restarting Steam, you should see the mod in Steam and you can launch into the mod that way. 
So yeah everyone that's the video I hope you found it helpful and if there's any issues then please let me know. I think this is all of the steps that need to be covered but if there's anything else then I'll need to leave them in the comments down below. But yeah hopefully you found this useful in some way and this is a little bit of a follow up to the initial video I did where I just went into this completely blind and had issues. So I'm happy to have at least resolved the issues on my end and as I said I'll be creating a fork of this new multiplayer code and hopefully be adding some multiplayer code to it and hopefully you'll check that out. I'll probably be leaving a link to that in the description as well. So let me know what you think about this and as always take care at their peace out see you later and uh, have a great day.